I'm going to get into the properties of the definite integral in this video. However, first I'm going to do a second example of integration by definition to hopefully reinforce the ideas of the definition. I want to integrate the function x cubed minus x between x equals 2 and x equals 5. That is, I want the area under the graph of this cubic between those two bounds. I set the integral up. It is the limit, as the number of rectangles goes to infinity, of the sum of the areas of rectangles. The area of each rectangle is the function applied to some point xk star inside the rectangle, which is the height, times the width of the rectangle. The width is the total interval, b minus a, divided into n pieces, so b minus a over n. In this case, b minus a is 5 minus 2, so 3, so b minus a over n is 3 over n. a is 2, so xk star, using the formula that I relied on in the last video, is 2 plus 3k over n. I put that in for both xk star places in the function. The 3 over n can come out of the sum because n is a constant as far as the sum is concerned. Then I need to do some algebra. I have a binomial to cube. To expand this, I would need to write it out three times and distribute, foil out if you wish, all the multiplications. I haven't shown this algebra, but the result is 8, 8 plus 36k over n plus 52k squared over n squared plus 27k cubed over n cubed. Then I subtract the 2 and the 3k over n to get this expression. Then I split the sum up into four pieces by linearity, pulling out the constants as I go. The result is four sums of 1, k, k squared, and k cubed. These were precisely the four special sums that I wrote down in the first video. I used the, the, those four formulas, n for the first, n times n plus 1 over 2 for the second, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6 for the third, and n times n plus 1 over 2 all squared for the last. Now I have a limit of a function. There's a lot of simplification work to be done here, and I've not shown all that here for the sake of time. I need to multiply all these out and group terms together. Each piece of the limit will have the same asymptotic order in the numerator and in the denominator when I multiply it all out. If I do all that and go to common denominator, again not showing all the arithmetic here, I get this expression, which then boils down to 567 over 4. This is the area under the curve of x cubed minus x between 2 and 5. Hopefully it is obvious, as with the previous question, that this is a pretty difficult and miserable calculation, even for a function that's not too complicated, in this case a two-term cubic. That example being finished, let me talk about the properties of the definite integral. Now that I have a definition and notation, I want to know what I can do with this definition and notation. First, of course, the integral is linear. It is defined by a limit and a sum, and both a limit and a sum are linear. Therefore, I can split an integral up over addition and subtraction and pull out the constants. This is the third linear operation of the course. Limits are linear, derivatives are linear, and now integrals are linear. In addition to linearity, there are a number of useful properties that I can argue for from the definition. First, what is the integral of a constant? Well, the area under a constant is the height of the function c times the width of the interval b minus a. This is the rectangle, the constant velocity situation that inspired the definition in the first place. What happens to an integral if I reverse the bounds? This is a strange question. Shouldn't the bounds always be lower to higher? Well, in a perfect world, they should be, but sometimes I work with bounds that are unknowns, and I might not know which of h or b is larger. If I end up in a situation where the bounds are in the wrong order, I need to switch them. I do this by multiplying by negative 1. This is a convention as much as anything. The area measured in the wrong order or the wrong direction is negative. This convection does work, and turns out to be a pretty useful little operation. Finally, if I integrate from a to b and then from b to c, I am calculating the area under the graph from a to b and then from b to c. Those two areas can be put together into one, going all the way from a to c. This equation says that those two are the same, and this makes sense. Whether I measure the area in one piece or in two pieces, it should still be the same area.